I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Last spring, I moved from Texas to Tennessee and started a new 235 gallon tank from Dutch Aquarium Systems. If you've been following my show, you know that I had a marine velvet outbreak in that tank and I tore the whole system down and started over. Now, if you missed that show, you want to get caught up so you can be in the loop, follow the link at the bottom of your screen. Since the restart, people have been asking me, they said, Mark, where did the tank go? Why aren't we seeing it? it seems like you're keeping this. Well, in the dark. Well, today I'm bringing that tank back. I'm going to give you an update on my 235 gallon tank. But first, I have an important announcement to make. Today is the 4th of July, also known as Independence Day for those of us here in the United States. And in honor of our currently serving and veteran U.S. servicemen and women, I'm going to have a 4th of July sale where you can get up to 25% off all my guides. Now, if you want to get in on the sale, follow the link at the bottom of your screen. And I want to keep this in perspective. Our country wouldn't be free. I couldn't have Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Heck, we all can enjoy the hobby to the level that we do without the sacrifices of our service men and women. That includes veterans and currently serving members. Now, you know, I wake up in the morning and I think, gee, what coral am I gonna frag today? Or I wonder if my fish are doing okay. Some of our service men and women wake up and go, I wonder if my legs are all gonna be attached at the end of the day, or am I even gonna be alive? So if you're a veteran or if you're a currently serving member of our armed forces or our allies, thank you for what you've done and thank you for what you're doing. Thanks for keeping all of us free. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Here's how my tank looks today. I look at it and I think, dang, that thing looks bare. But I realize that my tank is just getting started, so that makes sense. Now moving in closer, you can see I've added some corals, but I haven't gone overboard just yet. I've got some tester SPS pieces like Satosa, Undata, Sunset, and Superman Monoporos. I'm working on restarting my Zoa garden with some yellow, purple, and red hornets as well as some of the tried and true zoas such as Tubbs Blues and Hawaiian Tropics for my friends at Vivid Aquariums. As much as I love my hard corals, I'm a zoa freak underneath it all. Zoas got me started on coral, and I still love them today. I'm also trying some different corals, such as Abliopora, to help liven things up a bit. One thing I didn't expect is how much I've enjoyed my three urchins in my tank. I love watching these guys crawl all over, and unlike my tuxedo urchins I've had in the past, these pincushion and Halloween urchins have left my frags completely in place. I also enjoy showing the urchins to my son as so he can name their colors and calls them all by their name. While my coral and invertebrate collection is growing, I'm happy to report that my marine velvet survivor fish are back in their home. My chromis, leopard wrasse, and pink spot goby are all enjoying their increased living space and of course my leopard wrasse has managed to decimate my pod population within days of being back in the tank. But this guy, he's a great hunter. Of course I've got a couple of new fish as well. I've got a female Bellis Angel and a pair of tank bred Bengai Cardinal fish. Now I'm also dabbling in the fish in the fringe area with a pair of blue throat triggers. This pair is still in quarantine for observation, but they'll be in my tank soon. While I'm talking about fish on the fringe, I was tempted to get a harlequin tusk as I love their colors, but I just don't trust them not to eat any clams I might put in my tank. So I'd rather keep clams than a tusk, so the tusk is out. Now that rounds out the livestock portion of my tank. Let's look at what type of hardware changes have been made. In my last tank update show, I told you that I was replacing my old sump with a brand new custom sump from My Reef Creations, which is this bad boy right here. Now I'm going to do a full review on this sump in a future Mr. Saltwater Tank TV episode, but for now I wanted to point out one aspect of it because I've been getting lots of questions and it's something I'm going to be keeping a close eye on, which is the use of a biomedia. Now this biomedia isn't like the bio balls that people used back in the 80s with tanks, which turned out to be not such a great idea, mainly because bacteria doesn't adhere to slick plastic surfaces. So, this biomedia is a media made by Seachem called Matrix. Now this stuff is extremely, extremely porous. It's very, very light, which means it has lots of holes, lots of places for nitrifying bacteria to grow. Now, the first thing when My Reef Creations talked to me about the biomedia that came to my mind, the first thing I thought was, well, that's a nice idea, but we're gonna trap a whole bunch of detritus and other crap in here. Well, they said, since our filter stock tray is completely sealed, there's not gonna be no detritus getting down into the biomedia area. And that has been my observation with the sump in the past two months. I've gotten no junk accumulated underneath here, so I expect to have no junk in here, no detritus, inside the biomedia. And I've been able to keep my nitrates very, very low, 
without having to carbon dose or use bio pellets as well. So keeping an eye on this, I'll let you know what I think after I've tried it for another couple weeks here. So you can get an idea of what I think about the biomedia and is it working? With that, let's have a quick look at the rest of the sump. The center chamber of the sump houses my Hydor Performer 2005 skimmer with dual foaming pumps. Since the skimmer is a recirculating skimmer, I have it driven right off my return pump, which helps me save on electricity and cut down on heat in the tank. Now, the Performer 2005 has been working great for me. It produces plenty of foam, it skims well, and is silent, which makes me happy. Now, you'll see a full review of the skimmer on a future Mr. Saltwater Tank TV episode. For now, know that I've been very happy with it. Next up on the sump side is a reverse weir and a small chamber for my return pump, which also drives my bulk resupply dual medium reactor. I'm running activated carbon and granulated ferric oxide, or GFO for short, on this tank, and as usual, the reactor is working great. You might be asking yourself how I have the reactor suspended off the bottom of the tank, and the answer is with mounting rails that I had Dutch Aquarium Systems put on the stand. These rails make for an easy way to hang my MIDI reactor, mount my cooling fan, and make for a nice place for my GHL doser to wait until it's time to start dosing the tank. Of course, the rails make it easy to route electrical wires to help keep things nice and neat. Undertank lighting is provided by Eco Exotics 36 inch stunner strips. I chose these lights so they're easy to mount with double stick tape, so installing them was cake. Auto top off service is provided by Tunzi's Osmolator, which of course is rock solid. And we've hung out downstairs for a bit, so let's go upstairs and see what's over my tank. I chose Ecotech Marine's Radeon LED fixture for my tank. And one of the questions I had was, well, how am I gonna mount these lights over my tank? Cause I have four individual units. One thought was to mount them on the tank with some kind of bar contraption. Since my tank is rimless, that would completely ruin the clean look. Next option would be to hang them off the back wall, suspend them over the tank. That option was out because this is a rental house and putting big holes in the wall would not bode well for me getting my rental deposit back, which meant I had to suspend the lights off the ceiling. Now I have four individual units. The last thing I wanted to do was suspend each unit individually when I'm trying to measure out, locate them directly over my tank. That meant I had to go to some kind of rail setup and I looked at doing a DIY setup of my own. However, right about that time, Ecotech Marine came out with their own rail kits, which answered my problem. I've got two different types of rail kits on this tank that I'm experimenting with. I have the short rail kit here on this one, which puts the lights closer together, and I have the longer rail kit, which of course spreads them out. Now I did this for a reason. Over on the right side of my tank, you notice that I have kind of a more straight up column that's narrower. So I put the narrow rail kit, the short rail kit, over this column so I can have the lights closer together, focus that light down on the column of rock where the coral is gonna grow. Now over on the other side of my tank, I have a larger, more spread out, rock structure to, to help cover up the overflow on my tank. Therefore, I put the long rail kit on these two radions here to spread the light over that wider rock pile to spread out the light, try to get things covered in terms of lighting as much as I could. Now, I've been extremely happy with the radions. They've been growing corals just fine. And Ecotech Marine surprised me again and brought out some new lenses that I wanna show you all today. Ecotech calls these new radion lenses. They're TIR lenses and they're specifically built for deep tanks in the 30 inch range, like my 235 gallon tank. Now, since the Radeon is modular, which I always tell people is very important for any LED fixture, swapping out the lenses is easy and fast. Once I've had time to experiment with these lenses, I'm gonna give you a full update. For now, I just wanted to make you aware of them and let you know that they're gonna go over my tank. The last thing I wanted to update you on is whether or not I'm going to leave my tank open topped like it is right now. And the answer is that I am, at least for the foreseeable future, for two reasons. Number one, I enjoy the new perspective I get from looking down on my fish and corals. It's cool to see the fish from this perspective. And the best coral photos are always taken from the top down. So as my corals grow out, I'll look forward to getting some great top down photography of them. The second reason I'm leaving a canopy off my tank is due to heat issues. We're having a hot summer here in Nashville and come to find out that our rental house has an undersized air conditioning unit for the square footage in the house. And there's zero insulation in the attic. That means when it gets slightly warm outside, the air in the house can reach upwards of 85 degrees. Not comfortable for us humans. Now the good news is my tank is not getting above 81 and a half degrees. Now 81 and a half is not the best, but it's not necessarily bad. The good news is that the fish aren't looking stressed, the corals aren't stressed, so 
I'm gonna leave it as it is for now. I don't wanna put a canopy on here and potentially trap more heat and cause a bigger heat issue than I already have because I like that I've been able to keep my temp at 81 and a half with just the cooling fans on here. So for the moment, the tank is staying open top. There you have it. There's an update on my 235 gallon tank. I'll keep you updated in future Mr. Saltwater Tank TV episodes about the tank so you're in the loop. Last thing I want to say today is if you're one of our currently serving U.S. service men or women or any of our allies or any of our veterans, thank you for what you're doing and thank you for what you've done. I cannot have Mr. Saltwater Tank TV without your sacrifices and we all can enjoy the hobby that we do without what you're doing again and what you've done for our veterans. So thank you again. Don't forget, if you want to take advantage of my 4th of July holiday sale where you can get up to 25% off my guides, just follow the link at the bottom of the screen. Till next time, I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Have a good one, enjoy your tanks, enjoy your 4th of July holiday if you're not working, and know your tank personality.